Today's video is going to be on that caravan. Yes, that infamous caravan. Now, if you haven't watched this video, I want you to watch this caravan participant, for lack of a better word. Uh, tell us why he's on his way to the United States. I watched this and my jaw dropped. Talked to a few people in Jose is from Honduras. He was deported earlier this year. He was convicted of a felony, a homicide, but he says he wants to get back to the U.S. I want to ask you, Jose, what is this? Uh, well, yes. Why are you trying to go back to the U.S.? I, I want to I wanna because I got a, a trouble in a, in a gang aid in, in a, my country, Honduras. I got a lot of trouble. And earlier this year, deported for felony? Yeah. He says he wants to apply for pardon for the felony he committed. Gotcha. And uh, Lucina is going to help us a little. Lucina, what was the crime that he committed? Uh, he was convicted of related to murder. Convicted of murder. Okay. Can you ask him exactly what happened? Um, ¿cuál, ¿Cuál es tu felonía exactamente? Number three. Number three. A third degree felony? Intento de, de matar. Attempt of murder. <laughs> well, at least he was honest. And at least he's telling us who he is. I mean, how many other ones out there that we don't know about their criminal history um, are not being interviewed? And you know that the left is going to tell you, well, that's just one caravan participant. You know, the rest are starving refugees. Like Obama said in his uh, speech, he obviously missed the video of the invaders invading Mexico and leaving Mexican police bloody. But whatever. And I've watched some of those videos. Those people are not starving. In fact, if you ask them or if you uh, watch like Spanish news or videos of, of reporters that are on the ground asking them why they're coming, not one of them is saying that we're running for persecution from our country for our religious beliefs or we're gay and we're, you know, they're going to kill me or I disagree with the, you know, president's policies and I'm on a hit list or what have you, you know, re regular asylum seekers. No, they're saying, um, I want to go to America and work and live the American dream, which I don't blame them. Our country is amazing. But no to caravan participants. If you love this country so much and want to come here and participate and be part of the labor force, put the flags of your countries down while marching. Stop singing the national anthem and please refrain from drawing swastikas on the American flag and burning it and calling our president the Antichrist. That's not going to get you out of sympathy. And if he is the Antichrist, why are you coming here? Honestly, it's just ridiculous that, that they would do that. Uh, now let's talk about what I really wanted to address is why... Uh, why people are in fact coming in, in, to claim asylum and why a lot of them in under normal circumstances like the last caravan um, were processed as asylum seekers and let go into the United States to wait for their court date. Thank goodness that Trump yesterday uh, announced during the Laura Ingram show that he will be putting tents to process these uh, asylum seekers or refugees uh, so that we don't process them, they get a court date, and they disappear forever. On a side note, get ready for the Hitler and concentration camp comparison because of those tents. But we're used to it. But I want to go into something that I recently found out that just left me dumbfounded. Like I had no idea how powerless we are to do anything about this caravan. Even if we do build the wall, or continue to finish building the wall the Democrats started, um, this is not gonna stop the people that are coming here to seek asylum and refuge. So I put my glasses on because I'm gonna read. So I wanna reiterate that building a physical wall, of course, is important, but we really need to focus on building a legal wall. Right now, uh, Illegal entry is a misdemeanor unless you get caught and then it becomes a felony. But let's go into the 
uh, root of the problem. Here's the root of the problem. The United States asylum law, asylum law uh, derives from the United Nations. That's what's controlling our borders. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Anyways, the 1951 UN Refugee Convention and the 1967 Protocol to which we became a signatory in 1968 um, have been baked into our legal codes. Article 3 precludes a Muslim travel ban. Article 16 mandates free legal aid for refugees. Article 17 requires allowing a refugee to work. Article 22 mandates free education. Article 23, welfare. Article 26, travel anywhere within the United States. Um, Article 28, travel outside the country. Article 32 and 33, make deportation very difficult. And Article 31 prohibits imposing penalties on account of their legal entry or presence on refugees. So we are sort of obligated to process these refugees that way. Um, and basically, our borders are, in essence, controlled by the UN right now. Unless we get rid of this and build that legal wall, this is not going to stop. You know that Ramzi Youssef, the Islamic terrorist behind the World Trade Center bombing, actually flew into JFK Airport, applied for asylum, and was released into New York City? Did you know that? It's a great example of somebody taking advantage of the asylum laws that were uh, dictated that are dictated by the UN. If we don't uh, do something about this refugee uh, or the convention, refugee convention that we are a signator on, um, we can become like Germany. In fact, uh, when Angela Merkel, who thank goodness is going away in December, uh, when she said the right to political asylum has no limits on the number of asylum seekers. She was referencing the legal obligations of this UN convention. And basically all it would take to reduce America to Germany would be for the courts to force our government and laws into full compliance instead of uh, what we do now, which is partial compliance with the UN convention we signed on. So, I, you know, we love legal immigrants in this country. And let me tell you, America lets in 1 million legal immigrants every year. We have 4 million waiting to do it legally. And we have 700,000 naturalized every year in this country. So it's not that we're xenophobic. We just want you to do it the legal and way. And before I forget, as Americans, we need to stop apologizing for wanting to enforce our immigration laws. As Americans, we have a right to protect our borders. And when somebody calls you racist, remind them that illegal is not a race. It's a legal status. Therefore, I cannot be racist for wanting to enforce the laws that these lawmakers that are now calling us racist help write. Start standing up for America and American exceptionalism. I am a proud nationalist, just like I have many uh, family members in Mexico that are proud Mexican nationalists. It's not racist. It's having love for the country that you're in and a part of and wanting what's best for our country. There is nothing wrong with that. I just want to say thank you to all of you that have encouraged me to start my own YouTube channel. I actually did have one. I just rarely use it. I use it more for storing, but I will be uploading videos, um, hopefully every day, tackling, you know, issues that we're all fuming about. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share this link, um, and click that notification button so you know when I upload a video. God bless you, and God bless America. Until next time.